Hello and welcome back to another video on the channel of the 18th North Carolina Volunteers of Company A. Today we have once again another battle narration for you, with the 51st and 52nd New York going up against the 8th Florida and the 18th North Carolina. The Union High Command advanced its troops into the forest covering the low slope of South Mountain soon after the first beams of morning sunlight pierced the morning mist. The men of Paul Franks and Venom's companies were well rested and ready for the bloody task ahead of them. Captain Winkler of the 18th North Carolina, with his company being held in reserve, observed the Union advance while sending frequent messengers to the Confederate battery positioned on the road. Meanwhile, Captain Hogg and his Floridians had been tasked by the Confederate High Command to hold a vanguard position along a snake rail fence to prevent an early breakthrough of the Union forces. Quickly, a hot firefight erupted between the advanced elements of the Confederate and Union forces. Being in their better position, the Confederates forced the Union to shift their battle lines deeper into the forest where the muskets of the 18th North Carolina awaited them. Quickly, a vicious duel erupted between the troopers of the 51st New York and the 18th North Carolina. Eager to stop the Union advance in its tracks, Hogg and his Floridians shadowed the 52nd New York's advance along the Snake Rail fence line. They were determined not to let the Yankees take the Confederate gun battery. The firefight between the 51st New York and the 18th North Carolina grew in intensity, with the Confederate artillery, consisting of Bachmann's battery and an artillery detachment of the 8th Florida, scoring several hits among the Union ranks. Thus, prompted to respond, the 51st New York charged the Confederate batteries, driving them out at the point of their bayonet. But, the 18th North Carolina saw their peril and rushed at them with a cheer. Yet, the Union prevailed, despite the gallant attempt of the 18th North Carolina. The 
Soldiers Union, being occupied by the devastating musket fire directed against them by the 8th Florida, neglected to secure its right flank, a fact which the 18th North Carolina was more than happy to exploit. Soon, the road ran red with the blood of the blue and the gray, and the screams of injured men pierced the heavens. The Union found itself in quite a pickle as the 18th North Carolina and 8th Florida began to tighten the noose around the Union position ever tighter. Sensing an opportunity, the 18th North Carolina rushed at the enemy, but was bloodily repulsed by the 51st New York. Yet, the New Yorkers suffered heavy losses in turn and had to retire to the position of the 52nd New York. Meanwhile, the 1st New York Heavy Artillery decided to put the rebel guns to good use and turned them on their adversaries. The 18th North Carolina was to become the first victim of the first New York Heavy Artillery's wrath. <laughs> While the 18th North Carolina was attempting to regroup after having been shattered by the devastating fire of the Yankee gunners, the 8th Florida held the enemy at bay with desperate fighting. Having finally regrouped, the 18th North Carolina and 8th Florida attempted to get into the flank of the Union by pushing into the forest. Yet, now they were on the same killing ground on which the Union had lost many a poor boy in the advance made in the morning. Right. 
As the sun began to set, Captain Winkler, together with his 18th North Carolina, attempted one last assault on the Union position, but was repulsed with heavy losses. Nightfall saw the end of hostilities for the first day of this engagement. Both sides had suffered heavy losses, but the fighting was not done, as the next day proved to be much bloodier indeed. After both sides had spent a restless night under arms, with no fires to ward off the night's cold, the Confederate forces began their offensive. The 18th North Carolina was to flank around the Union skirmishers and roll up the Union defense line. At first, things worked out well as they caught the Yankees half asleep, but they had, by chance, missed a heavy line of skirmishers which just returned to camp from their shift. A nasty surprise for the jubilant Confederates. After having been shattered, the 18th returned to the front with reinforcements to bolster their ranks. Meanwhile, the 8th Florida, unaware of the 18th North Carolina's peril, was fighting a desperate battle against the Union gun battery and the 52nd New York. The 51st New York was closing in on their position also. Despite the moment of surprise, the marksmanship of the battle-hardened Floridians made the Yankees of the 51st New York regret their assault. Having arrived at the front, the 18th North Carolina had deployed scouts and messengers to locate the 8th Florida to coordinate a combined assault onto the Union line. But the wooded landscape and the well-aimed artillery fire disrupted the lines of communication, frustrating both Confederate officers in the process. Meanwhile, the Yankee guns were zeroing in on the formation of the 18th North Carolina, forcing them to relocate on the double quick. Oh, 
In an attempt to seek shelter from the shot and shell of the 1st New York Heavy Artillery, the 18th sought shelter behind a rock formation, while the 8th Florida hunkered down behind abandoned Union artillery limbers. And stay in line. Don't skirmish. Come here! Having abandoned their position on the Confederate left, the 8th Florida began to outflank the Union position with a quick march through the forest. With courage in their hearts, the Floridians charged the enemy line, driving them back. The 18th North Carolina, seeing the 51st New York readying themselves to pounce the blood frenzied Floridians, charged with a shout of Tar Heel on their lips. Together, they threw the Union out of their works and began to reform their lines and plan their defenses. Yet, the Union counterattack occurred quicker than expected, causing heavy losses among the ranks of the 18th North Carolina, who fought back desperately. Yet, the pressure was too great and the Carolinians had to fall back to the shelter of the forest and were quickly engaged by the 52nd New York thereafter. The 8th Florida, unaware of the position of the 18th North Carolina, bravely advanced towards the Union line, facing the guns of the 51st and the 52nd New York. The Carolinians, 
lent their support to their comrades by enfilading the position of the 51st New York with deadly volleys of musket fire. Oh, okay, I don't know where it is then. I see it, I see it behind us. Left wheel, 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 Right. Yeah, I will come back if you need support for this. Right, we go up and then 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 we go up in an attempt to drive out the Floridians from their position, ended up overextending their line and got caught in the fire of both Confederate companies. Before Paul Frank was able to order the retreat, both Confederate companies pounced the 52nd New York, causing great slaughter and forcing them to run for their lives. Using this opportunity, the 51st New York engaged the remnants of the 18th North Carolina from the safety of the forest. The Union guns began to heavily shell the Confederate foothold. Gallantly, the 8th Florida charged the guns in an attempt to save their Carolinian brethren. In an attempt to regain the initiative, Winkler and his Tar Heels assaulted the position of the 51st New York, causing them to retreat in disorder in great haste. Meanwhile, the 8th Florida, who had taken the enemy gun battery with a bloody bayonet charge, was repulsed by the counterattack of a fresh company of the 52nd New York. The 18th North Carolina, seeing the peril their comrades were in, hastened into position along the low stone wall to return fire and cover the retreat of their bloodied Floridians. Yet. The hastily formed battle line of exhausted and battle-weary Tar Heels proved no match for the prowess of fresh New Yorkers. 
Nonetheless, the Tar Heels clung to their position with the courage of desperation as they needed to buy the 8th Florida enough time to regroup and reform. Having reformed his men with remarkable speed, Hogg and his 8th Florida began to pour a destructive fire into the tightly packed ranks of the 51st New York. Both sides had committed every available reinforcement to this fight. Ammunition began to run low. So, the 18th North Carolina was ordered into a bayonet charge to drive out several small pockets of resistance around the rock formation below the Union gun batteries. Yet, the Federals were not beaten yet and pitched into the Confederates with a vengeance, bringing them to the verge of breaking with a fearsome counterattack. Only the combined efforts of the 8th Florida and the 18th North Carolina were enough to hold the blue tide back. As the sun set over the battlefield, the Federals realized that they had lost on this day. As the Confederates had occupied and fortified their former position and refused to be moved out, despite numerous attempts to break their lines with cannon or with bayonet. Thus, bloodied but unbroken, they retreated, leaving their dead and wounded for the Confederates to bury and to care for. Thus, ceased the hostilities on South Mountain on the second day of the battle. A stalemate had been achieved, at a steep price in young lives. Thank you for watching, and we hope you enjoyed. If you would like to see more of the 18th North Carolina Volunteers, like and subscribe to catch every new video. We will see you soon again when the 18th North Carolina goes out to war again. Stay safe and goodbye. Tar Heel. Thank you.